So how often do you do this? I, I shoot at least one a week. Okay. Uh, and then if they go over, sometimes I'll just cut it into two parts. Yeah. And I just grow it. Uh, it's a great just, mechanism as an elected official because people don't, barring me doing something really stupid, yeah. which is... It, it, li- it lives in the realm of possibility. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not scared to talk about it. Welcome into the Ben Burnett Show. My guest today is Travis Brown from Charinga. Uh, Travis, welcome in. Thanks a lot for having me, Ben. Appreciate we, it. We wanted to, uh, first, before with that, I want to give a big shout out to Strong Side Solutions for jumping on with us as a sponsor for, for the next couple of weeks. They had listened to the show. We brought them in and, uh, you know, did a really good interview. I want to thank Wendell Strickland and Grant and, and his whole team for, for jumping on with us over the last uh for the for the next couple of weeks uh so call those guys and tell them how much you appreciate them and how much you love them and that you're that they're based locally here um uh, travis quickly man it's uh I've gotten to know you over the last couple of months travis is the partner proprietor for Chiringa at city center kind of that first staple restaurant uh in the middle of downtown alpharetta that was a you know, a concept, I guess, the whole city center idea began several years ago, and you're kind of the first guy to take the swing. So we appreciate you being here. A lot of pressure. And I've seen um, I've seen some of your former guests and um, got a good lineup. So I feel important for a change. Yeah, we, <laughs> this beats working for sure. It does. So I got to go in after this. What's uh, so tell me this, man, what attracted you? To the whole city center property, I know you're you're a North Metro Atlanta resident. You live over in East Cobb. Uh, talk talk to me a little bit about how you get started in the uh, in the in the in the restaurant world and how you feel like that's a calling on your life. Gosh, that is a <laughs> a, a long winded answer. Probably I've been in it for a decade now. Um, I think just by chance, I was working my day job in Buckhead. What'd you do? I was in real estate finance. Um, company there and I was in cube land. So I was, you know, kind of miserable. Yeah. Not liking my life um, or my work life that was. Um, and I just started going to the same restaurant over and over again in Buckhead. And it was something simple called Jimmy John's and uh, ended up just investing in a Jimmy John's down in Jacksonville, Florida. One turned into 10. Um, <laughs> and that's how I got into restaurants. Right. Now, Chiringa, I'd like to jump ship to that. Sure. Um, because that's what we're talking about. Um, that really, I have no credit in that. It's my, um, uh, I've, I've got a great partner, um, Andy McCoskey. He started Chiringo down in Great Beach, Florida about three years ago. So anybody who's been to 30A knows exactly where that is we always reference it's across the street from red bar yeah because <laughs> red, red bar has been around forever yes so um so andy deserves the credit there he, he's got um he's got a lot of experience with tim lizzie's um, man i'll tell you that's like if you could define atlanta if you could define atlanta in one and it's a it's a chain but not really it no you, it, it feels smaller than that. If you could define Atlanta in one restaurant, that's what I would. That That's it. I agree. Total. A hundred and ten percent. I just can't tell you. Everybody who's lived here for any length of time, like has been there <laughs> and eaten the skillets. Yeah. And, oh, my goodness. And and just, I mean, man, it's great. Well, it was where all the, uh, I went to the Buckhead one for so many years. Oh, yeah. It's where all the cool kids were hanging out. So I tried to be cool for, for those years. So. Um, yeah, Andy, uh, he, he traveled to the southern coast of Spain uh, about four or five years ago. Um, Tarifa, it's the kite surfing capital of the world. That's where the inspiration is derived from. Um, there's all these open air beach bars um, called Chiringuitos um, that he got inspired from. So he opened um, Chiringo down at the beach in Grayton Beach. He and I, um, I knew him in Atlanta. But we kind of became golfing partners down in Florida. I was living in Destin for five years. Um, talk shop a lot, talk business. Um, I'm obviously in the franchising realm. 
Um, you know that du- well. Yes, du- duplicating locations. Um, so he and I just uh, got off and and kind of formed a, a more efficient model of his restaurant down there. Um, brainstormed, uh, took about a year, year and a half to get to store open in Alpharetta. Um, uh, a, a, a lot of real estate decisions, uh, and we targeted Alpharetta, really the Northwest Corridor, just we felt like there was a lot of cross-marketing benefit um, between Chiringo, 30A in general, and Alpharetta. Tons of people who go down there all the time that you wouldn't have to explain your concept to. Exactly. So there's there's 30A stickers um, everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> Ev- everywhere. <laughs> and it's, you know, why not? It's, it's a... Um, to me, it's the most beautiful beach in the country. Um, uh, just, just the golf side, the white, white sand. Yeah, it's um, rock solid. It's you can't beat it. I, yeah. I, I grew up. I'm, I'm a Pittsburgh guy going to the Jersey Shore. So, I'm, yeah, it's not the it's, same. It, it, it's unique. <laughs> it's charming in and of itself. I love it up there. Don't get me wrong. Um, but it's just night, night and day in terms of picturesque. So, we saw the Northwest Corridor as our target market so we met with a different you know a few different people and brokers and um did our legwork and this didn't just fall into our lap i'm sure you know it took it took some persistence and and um you know i can't be can't be happier with our start we kind of wrote opened at the wrong time of year winter you could not have (laughs) opened at a more wrong time of the year Uh, and also on top of that probably the rainiest year in history i think yep so and you're um, still you're still you're still going we're we're still open (laughs) (laughs) we're counting down the days until march oh man when you guys get that random it 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 will be it'll be next month you'll get some warm saturday in february and yes and it will unleash the potential and And it's just the random nice weekend in february and an otherwise utterly God awful month. Yes, we we've we've already seen it. You know, last month we had a sixty five degree Saturday, probably our only one. Yeah, literally the, the the only one, and we had just kids playing out on that green space. Uh, it, it's a good, you know, the patio um, uh, is fantastic. Just a great place to have a cocktail or or a cat. We're just a casual, happy setting. Um, parents come in and just are able to enjoy their meal. For a change. Turn and, your kids loose. And watch their kids just run around. I bought a bunch of uh, soccer balls and footballs for kids to play with out there. Um, so we're looking forward to March. Um, Mar- again, March through October. <laughs> <laughs> and then shut down. Yeah. No. Um, but it's been it's been a learning curve for us. You know, this is our first one in this operating model that we're in. Um, new market. And uh, so we're still tweaking things every day. We're still learning from customers every single day. And that's, that's really been the, the most rewarding or, or fun part for all of us. Andy, myself, um, even our, our crew, Watts and, and, and Dave, just talking with the customers that walk in, getting oh, yeah. to know all the, all the locals and the, and the citizens of Alpharetta that come out, um, even in the rain. And, um, you know, look forward to you know, meeting more and more, but getting to know these people on a, on a, on a first name basis and truly being that neighborhood restaurant. You're going to have, I'm just, if you, if you live, if, if you live anywhere in North Fulton and haven't been down to the city center in Alpharetta, that's the, it's the first restaurant I would go to because some of it's real while well, you, while well, I'm sure it's really, really expensive to run a restaurant or a space down there. I also know that you guys don't necessarily make it feel pretentious. Yes, and that's we're the antithesis of that. We want come as you are, um, casual setting. Again, we get we're very dog friendly, uh, kid friendly, of course. I got two little kids myself, um, three little kids, but one's not so little. Um, but um, so uh, it, it's uh, we want people to just to be. Um, it's just a casual setting. Yeah, Give me two live. seconds. Go yeah, you got it. Hey, do you want me to read the, the, so what do I need to do? That part. I need to read it again? Yeah. Okay, I didn't know if you had one. Are you a business owner with 150 plus employees? Did you receive an increase in your healthcare premiums again this year? When it comes to the cost of healthcare, there is something you can do to control costs without sacrificing quality. 
StrongSide Solutions developed eBenefix, a program that provides the restructuring of the individual parts of the healthcare delivery system to employers and employees. With only 120 employees, the eBenefix healthcare model saved the city of Villarica over a million dollars in 2018 alone. Restructure your health care, release trapped capital, and manage your health care spend as you would any other facet of your business. Call StrongSide Solutions today at 770-4-STRONG. That's 770-4-STRONG. Or visit them online at strongsidesolutions.com. Money. Boom. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's great. All right, so we're going to take a step back here. Sitting in cubicle hell. <laughs> that back, in, back in Buckhead. Because I always like to hear... You know, we'll talk for 30 or 45 minutes, and I like to hear what makes people do what they're passionate about. Sure. And as a guy who's set in many a cube, I was like, <laughs> man, there's just, I, I'm just telling you, if you're sitting in one right now and you're listening to me, th and that's what you love to do, then just ignore the next 30 seconds. <laughs> but if you're looking for something else, the economy has never been better. Take a risk, bet on yourself, go out there and do it. Because. <clears throat> You can always go back. You can always go back. But just being land, just being somebody who's landlocked into something that they hate is just my personal version of hell. It is. Well, it's not just you, Ben. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a lot of us out there. Uh, you know, there's positives to it. I try to look at the positive. But you learn a lot. You learn a lot. Man, you're very intimate with your work, uh, your coworkers. You get to know them well. Um, so I met a lot of good good people from that environment, good friends. But but I'll tell you this, and and you're you'll know it's coming out of my mouth as soon as I get there because it's like the culture of people in this world. Like there used to be this subculture of people that smoked, yeah, because they they knew each other very well. They knew their friends. They knew they just they had that in common, and they'd walk outside every other hour, and like you spend five or ten minutes with them, and then. Sooner or later, you know everything there is to know about them. The other place that you see that are in restaurants, and it's in spades because you never have the opportunity. I, it was the mo it, I worked in restaurants in college, catering companies, and it made me whether it's a politician or a salesperson or whatever, it made me so centric because people suck. <laughs> not not all of not all of them yes. but like the you get you get the worst of people when something's not going right and it taught me how to deal with adversity i'd tell any young person out there that really wanted it you'll take those lessons with you everywhere you go sure you can put me on the phone and hook me up to it and make me call a hundred people and it just doesn't phase me <laughs> because i know what it means to get just absolutely torched and you get drunk people you get people that are just disrespectful had a bad day at work and like you wear that that like they're throwing fastballs and like you're gonna get one Absolutely. and plenty of times it's not your fault and it's just it was the best lesson in the world that's what i told uh brooke the lady that works works in your place i was like you sure. have you have the best job to learn everything you'd ever want to learn about people like you you're a psychologist i will probably <laughs> Uh, make sure all my kids work in a restaurant growing up. Why? Just that it's just that um, handling pe dealing with people. Um, it, you, you get uh, that personal contact. I think can't be taught. Nope. You got to actually get out in the real world, and and um, it's case by case. Every customer is different. Everybody who walks through those doors is different. Yeah. Oh yeah. So you can't just give your rehearsed spiel. Um, with every one of them. We would always keep notes. It was like an internal game when I was working at a restaurant called Daniel George in Birmingham, who was owned by the guy who was a former lieutenant governor many, many moons ago. Fine dining place. I learned more about business there than I did anywhere else. And I kept track. This is the, to show how it'll tie into a business. I kept track of what I made week over week, what the weather was, because some people won't come in when the weather's lousy. They'll just cancel. Some people sure. will stay home when Alabama's on TV. Absolutely. Uh, and like you deal with 100% of those variables, but I use that as I kind of booked shifts for myself. Mm -hmm. But I also saw how I got to be more successful and the things that I do that night. And I'm telling you, like, there is a world of difference if you when you get to a place where you are waiting tables and you can make five dollars more an hour than everybody else. It translates through twenty shifts a month. Sure, big time. Yep. 
Um, and so that's what I'd tell any of the people who are great at waiting tables that have a business acumen, they can do anything. Absolutely. Uh, it's, it's so important. And it's, and they're your ambassadors. The, the ambassador is the key word. We use that, um, often. Um, but it's, 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 um, you got, I'm listen, I'm turning, I got my big 40th birthday this summer. So I, I'm, I'm not a, a spring chicken. Um, but I still enjoy bussing tables. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm a Pittsburgh guy, grunt work, blue collar. Um, it's enjoyable to me. I feel productive, that feeling of productivity at the end of the day. Um, and again, with all the Jimmy John stuff down in Florida. Um, you have no choice but to do it. You have no choice. Um, I mean, I was everything from, from register to, to, you know, bread starter to delivery driver. Whatever's needed, you fill holes. Um, yeah. And it's just a good, it's a good learning process. It takes a little humility. Um, but listen, I'd oh. rather be doing all this than in cube land. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we'll go, I'll, 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 I'll go back there. When you decided to take the jump into Jimmy John's and, and lo- really learn that franchising model, what, what was, was there a defining event or was this like when you do, or was it one of those things like before you broke up with your girlfriend in high school, <laughs> there was some defining event that was like, I know I'm going to break up with you at some point and it's not going to be today, but that was a, that was the qualifying event where I knew it wasn't going to work. <laughs> what was your qualifying event where you knew that it was going to work? Wasn't going to work. Uh, and, and you were like, I'm going into this business and there's nothing that was it, it just you married. It, it, it took time. Um, you know, I didn't just jump ship from, from that corporate job to, uh, being successful in Jimmy John's and, and Jimmy John, I've, I was blessed with some good timing too. I'll be honest. Um, uh, good real estate choices, I think is important. Um, but yeah, it, it didn't happen overnight, but yeah, I think once money came in and I started making, you know, more money selling sandwiches than, than my day job, I think that was kind of the, yeah, it's okay. Where it's I, okay. Where I had a little bit of freedom, freedom to, <laughs> to make that choice. And so how do you go, when, when, when you evaluate the Chiringo thing, how do you, how did you, how did that relationship come about just on the golf course? Were you at 10 Lizzie's and being like, Hey, this is what I'm doing. You know, this is what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I frequent, I, I lived in Destin. I, I lived in Atlanta for 12 years. After college, I went to college up at Brown University in Providence, Rhode Island. Yeah, man, the water fires in the summer. That's yes. a great place. Good Italian food up there. Oh, my gosh. Um, and then came down to Atlanta, um, went to grad school, Georgia State, got a couple of master's degrees, stayed in Atlanta for 12 years, and uh, moved to Florida for five. Um, knew Andy, as I said, yep. uh, from Atlanta and just being a patron at, at all the Tin Lizzie's um, and frequented his Chiringo restaurant down there. Um, ran into Andy at a gas station and uh, set up a golf, a tee time, started playing more golf together. And um, we just connected, yeah. you know, it's one of those where, and even today, I think, I, I hope he'll say this, um, but I feel like he compliments me um, for everybody's strengths and weaknesses, right? So he, my weakness is he probably is, is um, really carries the weight on, um, and, and I hope he'd like to say vice versa. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. We got to get him in here. He's your, uh, he's your backbencher, do the work kind of. He's, he's got great ideas. He's, he's a visionary. I think we both see eye to eye with a big vision for this concept. Um, we're not here to just open up a restaurant in Alpharetta. I think we are teed up for success with that Joel Box building right in the heart of Alpharetta. But our vision is to grow a brand, build a brand, and have... In a Tin Lizzie family sort of way. That, but not saturate a market like that. We want some rarity, um, but we do want multiple locations. Right. Um, So a couple in Atlanta. I I don't want to go... Where's the next one? Uh, We're we're looking. um, If anybody has ideas, reach out. Yeah. Um, But... uh, you know, that's that's my background is real estate. So I kind of take the lead there. Um, but, um, you know, I'd, I'd like to do something in, in town. Um, Buckhead, somewhere. Midtown, somewhere on the midtown. belt line. Yeah, it's got to be walkable. You know, daytime population's key. Talk to me about that, because that's something that has really changed 
And I think there's still a ton of people. And candidly, I'm one of them. You're one of them. I live on a, I live in a single family house on a half acre and, and like, but I, I can come downtown. Like I'm probably just at the cutoff being like three quarters of a mile. Like if I was hammered, I could walk home safely, but I probably, <laughs> right. I probably wouldn't just choose to. Exactly. Um, talk to me about that as you see the, the changes, obviously, you know, 30A's model is very walkable. I mean, sure. and that's just tourist. It's the nature of the beast. Um, but as you look here, is that something that is central to what location for Chiringa number two will be? It's like I'm not it's not somewhere where everybody's going to have to drive. We have our we have our criteria. You know, I think walkability is 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 one of the top few um, items on the list. I think um, just having a we're, we're very happy natural sunlight. I mean, you go up to that restaurant up there, you need sunglasses oh, yeah. when you're in there. I mean, it's just. It's just an awesome It's like space. San Diego. It's like Southern San Diego. It is. Uh, it really is. And it it fits our concept so well as bringing a taste of the beach up to up to Alpharetta. Um, that I think we want to we want to retain that and just have, you know, a lot of natural sunlight, indoor outdoor feel. Um, we don't want a big space. We like our intimate you know, everybody's kind of rubbing elbows yeah. kind of feel. It's not big, it's it. not a huge space. 1760 square feet. Yeah. Um, so it's, I'm sure you know that well. Yeah, that's right. I know <laughs> if every, you, if every you, square foot of that If one. you could have had 2,000, you would have taken it. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> it was a puzzle getting all that equipment together. I um, bet. In our kitchen. So it, it makes sense. It goes well with our simple, uh, our simple menu um, that we're not going to make lengthy ever. And, and so. I'll just tell everybody, I, I eat it twice a week. You do. I, I was going to say, I can the, always... Counting you for once, twice a week, chop, chop, ball. And, and if you if you're looking for something that's healthy to eat, probably minus the rice, but I don't know. And maybe the cur- mustard curry has a little. Yeah, you know. but if you're looking for something that's light and fresh, that chop, chop salad you can get it with any meat that they have, and it's literally the best. Like, if you wanted to call it a paleo bowl, I guess you, <laughs> I guess you could. That you, I know there was obviously some thought that went in there, but you guys have to sell just crap loads of them. We sell a ton of those, and it's a good price point too. Uh, Nine ninety nine for the for the grilled chicken. So, yeah, and um, in a place where I'm sure you're paying through the nose on square footage, that's a pretty cheap price. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I mean, you could eat cheap. You could eat. You know, we get fresh fish uh, daily, so. We got some good fish options as well. So tell me this, as you guys have, uh, I'm sure working in the food service world, like what's your, do you have, do you have any stories that have come out yet in Chiringa like that where you're just like, I will remember that forever. Like oh, ev- all the, all the restaurant, all the restaurant, like everybody's got good restaurant stories that's ever worked in them. Yes. Um, I mean, it typically involves alcohol. Oh, it, and al- you know, I, with with I, a patron, I'm sure it does. You know, we have our. You know, um, if we brought our lead bartender, general manager in here, he closes most every night. Well, you guys aren't open that late. We're not, um, but you could be. We, well, it's a thought. I mean, you got. You, uh, we naturally close down around nine o'clock, right? Whether we're open late or not, it's just the market. I think. Um, you know, some empty nesters, you know, the, the 30, 40, 50 age bracket, they come out for dinner and, um, and they go home, they have a couple of drinks and, and go home, get a good night's rest, which is, which is me. I mean, again, I'm turning 40, so, um, I get it, but, um, stories, I, I got to come back to you on that one. Um, so are you guys going to have, uh, are you guys going to get permits and have bands out there this summer and. We're working on it. I think, uh, again, we, we feel like a highlighted um, aspect of our space is the patio and obviously the green space. But the patio, we can get um, just a just an acoustic uh, soloist out there um, whenever. You're going to have Jimmy Buffett. Love to have Jimmy Buffett. <laughs> Do you, can you pull some strings <laughs> that, for me? I don't know him. I saw him sing the national <laughs> anthem yesterday. I was like, that's awesome. I, uh, I love that stuff. I, I do. So that, that beachy happy, you know, we don't want to be corny beachy yeah. by any means, you know. But, um, you know, we're, we're working on the live music aspect this well, spring. It, 
wrong wrong time of the year. So so tell me this. If if you haven't been if you haven't been down there, I would encourage you to go. And if you have if you're one of those folks that has to wait until it's seventy degrees outside, then you're gonna have to wait another six weeks. But <laughs> But I, I, I would, it's my favorite restaurant down there because everything else it's, and I don't take, I, you know, tapas and small plates and stuff like that. Like I got little kids and yeah. so that's a struggle. And so you guys are really fill that void, um, uh, to where I, I'm so excited about being able to bring my kids out there on a Saturday afternoon Yes, and, once. and, and let them just run in the fountain until they can't run anymore. When is that fountain opening? So, uh, by the way, I know that the uh, I know that the city has taken on responsibility from the general contractor to do it, and they're just kind of going to reimburse us. Great. Um, but I've heard so I've been an elected <clears throat> official now for thirteen months, and I heard August, and <laughs> and it's almost February. <laughs> so so there's it's hard to it's hard to say, but you're going to start getting people really fussing because man, that was taxpayer funded deal. And there's, that's one of the things that that was one of the staples of that when they first built it, I'm sure, I don't know if you were out here then when it was just literally leveled land, Mm -hmm. I'm sure you were at some capacity and there was the fountain and I'm sure the fountain was like, yep, this will be, I want, I want to be right here, right next Mm -hmm. to it. Um, and then the fountain, <laughs> and then the fountain, fountain <laughs> like no flooded, had electrical <laughs> issues and, you know, would have, would have hurt somebody, but w- we've got to rectify it. And there's no doubt, but that was kind of the first thing to come out of the ground with city center that people were like, Oh, this is great. Cause my son who's five now, I think I said this the, the night you came for your alcohol permit. I, I, Cause I was like, and I, I, in fact, I know I did because I was like, I remember taking my son out to the fountain when it was just him. I have three kids now. Like, this has got to get moving. It's like I used two children as a timeline uh, to be like, this thing has been broken so long. I've had two children. Uh, The gestation period on them alone is nine months. So we'll uh, we'll get it done, but man, I uh, I'm super excited to have you um, out here. You were you're, you you have the food, you have the restaurant here quality. If you remember everybody's name, I'm still it, working on it. Yeah, it's tough. I and again, you know, I I need to do a better job. But it'll take. But, it, that's what that's what makes the difference. That's your five. That, <clears throat> there's your five dollars an hour difference. Is like people go back to where they feel appreciated. Yeah. Uh, we truly, um, we, we talk about it all the time, just coming out from behind the, the bar, welcoming each guest, letting them know what we are. I mean, we're a new concept, so you, we're, we're working on the messaging element to it. It's a foreign name. Well, in Turinga, which means kite in the Caribbean. And you have a bunch of kites in there now. I have a bunch of kites. We're going to put up some more kites. Uh, Andy just said he's, he's got some more coming in. Um, and... Uh, so we're just, you know, we kind of created a new food category, beach food. Yeah. So, I mean, we're going to foreign name, new food category, uh, new oh, concept. No. So it's, it's a mouthful trying to explain everything right now. But I don't I don't know what it's going to be, but sometime either August, September, October, I'm going to throw the party with you guys of all parties. Let's do it. We are good at hosting parties. I, I feel like that. I, <clears throat> I feel like anybody who walks in there, their first thing is like, man, this would be a great space to just rent and we we have had a couple holiday parties. Move some of the tables out. That's what we do. Yeah, yeah. move some stools out. Turn the that. music up. We got a good system, <laughs> even on the patio. <laughs> um, so, um, but yeah, we've had corporate events there, uh, happy hours. Uh, we have one today. Um, so it's just a great place, great space. You're right on Main Street. Oh, yeah. Windows. You, can you see drive it. past it. Yeah. If you come up Highway 9 every Every day, it's right there on the right as you enter city center. Yes, it's going to be easily recognizable in eight weeks because there's going to be scantily clad people out there <laughs> at all all hours of the day. I'll be like, exactly. "Oh, that's Travis's restaurant, Charinga." Uh, but man, I appreciate you coming in and and, and talking shop with me today. Uh, just learning different avenues. You know, we've 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 talked to politicians. We've talked to 
you know, CEOs of massive business conglomerates. The one we had last week was a guy named Steve DeSutter, who's the CEO of Focus Brands, which is Moe's and yes. Schlotzky's. Different concept. I get it. Another level. But he... Uh, you know, we, we, we literally talk to everybody. If you're in North Fulton and you want to, and you want to come on and tell your story, I, I'd love to have you. I don't take notes. Uh, it's probably a restaurant quality is like, I've got <laughs> 10 great questions to ask everybody. <laughs> and the answers are never the same. That's great. Well, thank you, Travis. And, uh, stop by and see me. He's always wearing his Chiringa hat. Uh, how many hours are you putting in right now? Uh, usually five, six days a week, uh, lunch, dinner, as much as possible. It's yeah. really just a, just a matter of meeting meeting the customers at you this point. You still know your kids? Uh, what, you know, i got to work on the <laughs> the marriage a little bit more, a little balance of life there. But uh, no, I appreciate you having me on, and, and thanks a lot for coming in and grabbing those chop-chop bowls, too. Yeah, to absolutely. It. Travis Brown from Turinga, thank you for stopping in. This has been another edition of the Ben Burnett Show and Appen Media Podcast. Thanks, everybody. Was that terrible?